Who do you say that I am? When Jesus asks us this question, how might you and I reply? Worship is one of the ways we learn about what Jesus does so that we might proclaim who Jesus is. Jesus meets us in the assembly gathered for worship and calls us to be united in his love. Jesus invites us to tell the truth about the ways we have sinned against God and each other, and then responds to our confession with full and immediate pardon. Jesus is the saving, calling, redeeming word coming to us in scripture reading, prayer, and preaching. And Jesus blesses us, gives us his peace, sends us forth as disciples, and grants us the courage to answer the question, who do you say that I am? Having experienced Jesus in our worship, may we be so bold as to reply, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. We are gathered today for worship the 12th Sunday of Pentecost. We are gathered in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the aid of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, with all your faithful followers of every age, we praise you, the rock of our life. Be our strong foundation and form us into the body of your Son, that we may gladly minister to all the world through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our first reading is from the 51st chapter of the prophet Isaiah. Listen to me, you that pursue righteousness, you that seek the Lord. Look to the rock from which you were hewn and to the quarry from which you were dug. Look to Abraham your father and to Sarah who bore you. For he was but one when I called him, but I blessed him and made him many. For the Lord will comfort Zion. He will comfort all her waste places and will make her wilderness like Eden, her desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found in her, thanksgiving and the voice of song. Listen to me, my people, and give heed to me, my nation. For a teaching will go out from me and my justice for a light to the peoples. I will bring near my deliverance swiftly. My salvation has gone out and my arms will rule the peoples. The coastlands will wait for me and for my arm they hope. Lift up your eyes to the heavens and look at the earth beneath, for the heavens will vanish like smoke. The earth will wear out like a garment and those who live on it will die like gnats but my salvation will be forever, and my deliverance will never be ended. Here ends the reading. 
Our psalm is from one, Psalm 138. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praise. I will bow down toward your holy people and praise your name. Because of your steadfast love and faithfulness, for you have glorified your name, and your word is above all things. When I called, you answered me. You increased my strength within me. All the rulers of the earth will praise you, O Lord, when they have heard the words of your mouth. They will sing of the ways of the Lord, that great is the glory of the Lord. The Lord is high, yet cares for the lowly, perceiving the haughty from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you keep me safe. You stretch forth your hand against the fury of my enemies. Your right hand shall save me. You will make good your purpose for me, O Lord, your steadfast love endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 16th chapter. Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. And he said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. The gospel of our Lord, praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. Most holy God, you have founded your church on rock and given to us the keys of the kingdom of heaven inspired the gifts of your prophets, ministers, teachers, exhorters, givers, leaders, and servers, that we may be a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is our spiritual worship, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Every Sunday when we gather for worship, we say in the midst of our service, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. After all, we call ourselves Christian, Christians. And of course, we believe with Peter that Jesus is the Christ. Now, if you will, let me press you a bit on that. Be specific. What exactly do you believe about Jesus? Some years ago in my seminary days, our first course in systematic theology dealt with that very question. Our professor described Jesus as the proleptic that is in the birth and ministry of Jesus. God's future reign was already inaugurated, though we look to a future promised by God. In a sense, in Jesus, God has already spoken the final decisive world word. Jesus is the proleptic salvific. Salvific means exactly what it sounds like, that Jesus alone has the power to save and to redeem. He is the proleptic, salvific, hidden appearance of the eschatological 
and that word's a big one, but it simply means the end time, eternal kingdom of God. So did you get all that? Take notes. There might be a test at the end of this. Jesus is the proleptic, salvific, hidden appearance of the eschatological kingdom of God. On our way out of class that morning with the words of this morning's gospel passage in mind, we, we rather chuckled to ourselves over the whole thing. And Jesus said to them, who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter replied, you are the proleptic, salvific, hidden appearance of the eschatological kingdom of God. And Jesus answered him and said, what? Well, what indeed? What about Jesus? When it comes right down to it, we know rather little, at least concerning the details of Jesus' life. After all, he left no record of his own. He kept no diary. He wrote no book. Everything that we know about him is crowded into a few pages at the opening of the New Testament. You can read through it all in just a few hours. The story opens with the birth of a baby in an out-of-the-way town called Bethlehem with his first cradle, a manger for the feeding of livestock. He grew, grew up in the unsanitary mountain village of Nazareth with a reputation only for the fact that nothing good had ever come out of that town. As far as we can tell, it was a normal home. Jesus would have shared normal duties with his brothers and with his sisters. He knew how to fill lamps and to trim wicks. He knew what house cleaning involved. He knew how to build a fire and could prepare a fish fry. He learned the trade of a carpenter. So what we're saying here is that we believe that Jesus is a real person, not some figure out of ancient mythology, real flesh and bone, real muscle and blood, truly real. And that, by the way, is the point of those phrases conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. To the early church, the miraculous nature of Jesus' birth was, was not that big of a deal. It's only mentioned twice in the gospel. Jesus himself never refers to it. The 12 never discuss it. Paul never mentions it. The truly big deal was that he was born at all. That divine character actually took on human flesh laid aside the perks of heavenly office and became man. This after affirmation was, was never meant to prompt or encourage non-Christians into joining the band of believers in response to Jesus' supernatural origins. It was actually to slap down an argument that some Christians had put forward denying that Jesus was the same kind of human being that you and I are. They wanted to say that if Jesus were truly divine as everyone believed, then he was fundamentally different from the rest of us. Rumors even started that he made no footprints when he walked, cast no shadow in the sun. And they even wanted to say that Jesus could not have really died on Calvary because Jesus is God incarnate and God cannot die. Tough issues indeed. But the church insisted from the very beginning that this Jesus of Nazareth, whom we come to know in the gospel, is not only true God, but he is truly human as well. So as those early Christians repeated the phrase, born of the Virgin Mary, they affirmed his humanity. And as they repeated, conceived by the Holy Spirit, they affirmed Jesus' divinity. Listen to what the writer of the epistle to the Hebrews said. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by a son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he also created the worlds. 
He is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being. And he sustains all things by his powerful word. You all certainly recognize that this is not a description of you or certainly of me. We believe in Jesus Christ, true God, born of the Father from eternity, and true man, born of the Virgin Mary. We believe he was a real person, both human and divine, God's only son. We also believe he was Jesus Christ. At about 30 years of age, Jesus laid aside the tools of his trade and began to teach and preach and heal. From the very beginning, people reacted to him. Little children ran at the music of his voice, and the age found comfort in his presence. The sick found healing by merely touching the hem of his garment. He had his hours of popularity when the multitudes crowded about him. He had his moments of quiet reflection, either alone or with those closest to him. It was on just such an occasion that we encountered the dialogue of today's lesson. Jesus says to the twelve, who do you say that I am? And Simon answers, you are the Messiah from the Hebrew or the Christ, the Greek equivalent of Messiah, the son of the living God. Christ isn't Jesus' surname. It's a title. It indicates the anointed one, someone set apart for God's service. This Jesus was God's representative. In the Old Testament, the title was regularly applied to the king, but by the time of Jesus, the Jewish people were looking for a Messiah, Christ, who would come to lead them to victory against their oppressors, a conquering hero who would overthrow the hated Romans. As soon became evident, that was not God's intention in Jesus. And the rest of the story we know too well. He was betrayed by those he trusted, abandoned by those he loved. A purple robe was thrown contemptuously across his shoulders. A crown of thorns jammed down upon his brow. He carried his own cross as far as he was able to an outlaw's execution. The life which had begun in humble obscurity ended in public shame. He who at birth had been laid in a borrowed manger was now laid away in a borrowed tomb. But we all know that the story doesn't end there. And that's why we can continue to affirm, I believe in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Lord, let me ask you, what does that word mean to you? To the ancients, it meant master or owner and was always a title of consummate respect. In the modern world, we call Jesus Lord, and that's to say he is the chief, the boss, the main man, the head honcho. The buck stops with him. His decisions are final. A few years back, I ran across a document that was prepared for the Southern Presbyterian Church, and it was simply called a Declaration of Faith. And it says in part, we declare that Jesus is Lord. His resurrection is a decisive victory over the powers that deform and destroy human life. His Lordship is hidden. The world appears to be dominated by people and systems that do not acknowledge his rule. But his lordship is real. It demands our loyalty and sets us free from the fear of all lesser lords who threaten us. We maintain that ultimate sovereignty now belongs to Jesus Christ in every sphere of life. Jesus is Lord. He has been Lord from the beginning. 
he will be Lord to the end. Even now, he is Lord." End quote. Jesus Christ is Lord. Did you know that those four words were the first, Christ, first creed that the Christian church ever had? To be a Christian then and to be a Christian now is to make that simple affirmation. If someone can say for me, Jesus Christ is Lord, that person is a Christian. All along, we've been insisting that as we believe, so we behave. If we say that Jesus Christ is Lord, it means that for us, Jesus Christ is uniquely in charge. We are prepared to obediently follow in whatever direction the Lord chooses to lead, even if he takes us to where we'd rather we did not go. If we say Jesus is Lord, that means his priorities will become our priorities. We'll be drawn to those on the margins and the outcast. If we say Jesus is Lord, we will take our faith seriously. We will worship, we will fellowship, and we will pray exactly as Jesus did. If we say Jesus is Lord, it means that we're prepared to give to Jesus a love and a loyalty that, that will be given to no other person in all the universe. Jesus Christ is Lord. It may be that you cannot put into words who and what you believe Jesus to be. But so long as there is in your heart this wondering love and in your life this willingness to obey, you are a disciple, a follower of Jesus. In his book titled Jesus Rediscovered, the author writes, Beneath the church of the Nativity in Bethlehem, a silver star marks the precise spot where, where Christ was born. A stone slab nearby is supposed to mark the exact site of the manger wherein he lay. The Holy Land is littered with such shrines, divided up like African territories in the old colonist days between the different sects and denominations, the Greeks, the Arminians, the Copts, the Latins, etc., and often a cause of rancor among them. Most of the shrines are doubtless fraudulent, some in dubious taste and none to my liking, yet one may note as the visitors come and go to all, ranging from the devout to the inanely curious, that almost every face lights up a little. There's something about Jesus. And the question to the disciple comes again, who do you say that I am? You must answer, you and you and you. I wouldn't expect your response to say anything about proleptic or salvific, or eschatological. My prayer is that with Simon Peter, you would simply say with every fiber of your being, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. Amen. With the church, we profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, 
the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Confident of your care and help by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Lord, our rock, you are our foundation in Jesus Christ, your Son, whom we confess as the living God. Prepare your church for its mission in bearing witness to Christ, both here at home and throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You call forth praises from the far reaches of the universe to the smallest of creatures. Join our songs to theirs, that a spirit of praise and thanksgiving will arouse us to cherish the wondrous home that you have given us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All the kings of the earth shall praise you, O Lord. Direct the leaders of countries, legislators and magistrates, mayors and councils to walk in your ways. Help leaders regard those in need, with mer in need of mercy and fulfill your loving purpose in the governance of all peoples. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You call us into this community called Messiah Lutheran Church, in which we, though many, are one in Christ. May we recognize in ourselves and in one another the unique gifts that you have given us for the building up of the church for the sake of the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer in the sure and certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray, our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We invite all to receive the bread and wine of the Lord's table, either within our public service of worship each Sunday at 11 o'clock a.m. or also offered in the parking area Messiah Lutheran Church from 10 to 11 o'clock on Sunday mornings. Thankful hearts and voices raised tell everyone what God has done. Let all who seek the Lord rejoice and bear Christ's holy name. 
Send us with your promises, O God, and lead us forth in joy. With shouts of thanksgiving, Alleluia. Amen. The Congregation of Messiah Lutheran Church thanks you for joining us once again for worship this morning. We continue to invite you to join us every Sunday at 11 a.m. in public worship in our sanctuary at 1106 Yamens Hall Road or by joining us again for our online liturgy. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. And now may we go in peace to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. <laughs>